drinking, bro. Put down the water and grab a fucking drink. It's the fucking Super Bowl special, Rocco. Uh, it's, uh, it's the Super Bowl special we're doing. It sounded like Batman like back in the fucking 60s. That's what I thought. You know what it sounded like to me? It sounded like Hank Williams fucking Jr. doing doing Monday Night Football. We're doing the Super Bowl special tonight, yeah! Drinking yeah. Bros. Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck are you going for? Sports and God. shit. God. Yeah. Are Damn the Rams it, I love it. This year? We are, we are <laughs> joined. No, uh, it's, no. it's a trio tonight. <laughs> it's the three amigos tonight. It's just the three of us. It's uh, it, it is Matthew Best, the, hey. the best cheekbones in the biz, the, the tightest beard game in the biz. Welcome, Matthew. It's it, you know it's tighter than my childhood before my uncle made it loose. That's oh, weird. Let's start it off. Oh, Jared's not even here, and you've already started off. I think I can smell it. I have the coolest uncles ever, actually. But welcome, Ross. Good to be here, buddy. I, I, Hey, th- th- thank you for having your uncles on the show. Thank you. Hey, it's the three and, amigos. And we got to make this weird tonight, you know? Yeah. We do. We do. We really got to make it weird tonight. We really got to thank our uncles tonight. Uh, speaking of which, we've got uh, Vincent Vargas, a.k.a. Rocco, Boom. on the show. Hey, wah, 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 hey the wah. rock, I love you. <laughs> again. Again. With that weird? bullshit. I'll stop. No, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm sure he doesn't find it creepy. Uh, so <laughs> no, he's it's good. not like he's blocking you on Instagram. He's totally good. kidding. He's good. totally kidding. <laughs> and 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 of course we have you know me the uh, largest penis in the biz, you the do. biggest in dick the of biz, all time, so. Ross Patterson. Uh, and, and and we got a couple sponsors tonight. Who do we uh, have? As always, lay it on us. The finest, the finest whiskey in all of the lands. Uh, Lead goop, Slingers goop, whiskey. Goop, 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 goop. People are driving. Hey, I'm I'm gonna be honest. After being at Shot Show with you guys, people are driving three, four states to get that shit. It's uh, it's a hard one to find these days. People love the Lead Slingers. It's good. We're working on getting it out there, man, but we just fucking love everybody that drinks our shit. Not hey, literally I, our feces, but our liquor. Yeah, you know? no, but realistically, I, know. Look, like, I, I why can't wait till we get it here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Right, right. I love it. Right, I love like, it. Like, why would we put our name in if we didn't believe in what the fuck we sell? Oh, damn. Look, a lot, you, of, a lot of people don't. Poppy mad there, I'm just Jeff. saying, I love it. I know. I yeah. actually love I, the motherfucker. I feel like Rocco was going to fight me right then. No, and I was, not you. Come on. Jeez. No, I've just been drinking a little bit of whiskey, and you know, when I drink whiskey, I get fired up. So Rocco's yeah. gonna, I think Big Poppy's going to be a little tipsy on this show. I definitely am tipsy, but I'm going to try what, and clean hey, it up. So Rocco, what, what if what if Popoff Vodka, the shittiest vodka in the world, came to you and said, Rocco, I'm going to give you $3 million a year to promote Popoff Vodka. <laughs> Would you do it? Ah, three million a year? Uh, man, I'd rather fuck a dude, bro. <laughs> 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 that was not expecting that answer. <laughs> oh, I, lo- I love it when you've been drinking like this. Uh, yeah, I love yeah. it. I he love it. Not and our, our, our right other now. sponsor is, as always, at night she cries while he, he rides his steed. <laughs> Ooh, the first ever romance novel for, for dudes. dudes. The funniest book ever written in the history of goddamn literature. If you don't have it, go get it. It's yeah. on don't. Kindle. It's on hardback. It's on fucking Audible. It's everywhere. Get that motherfucker. I love what he does. The Ross. Get that motherfucker. I fucking fucking fuck. Yeah. That's, good that's, one. That's yeah. A good I told somebody, somebody the, other, the other day was like, dude, I just got your book. And I was like, great. After you finish reading it, slam your dick in the book because that's the only way you're going to feel alive again. <laughs> He agreed with me. I almost spit beer on that one. That was good. Oh my god! <laughs> he he definitely definitely agreed with me. Uh, what what are we what are we drinking tonight over there, kids? Dude, uh, we're actually going to be as honest as always. We're 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 backlogged on podcasts, so we're we're doing we're doing a two a day right now. So oh, shit, Ross, you still there? Oh, I am. Oh, I'm Sorry. definitely oh. here. I, I was getting sexed. Sexted. Uh, oh, were you really? Were you really Jesus getting sexed? Christ. You know how many times that happens to you during, during a podcast? I, I'm just lucky, lucky to be so right? close to him and hopefully watch this <laughs> Jesus. shit. Jesus. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> we had a lot. We had to log in some podcasts. It's been a little bit. And uh, we had like a th- two and a half hour waiting time. Oh, God. And we're logging number two for the night. And it's just Ross, 
Rocco, and myself. And so we're drinking. Just the threesies. So threesies. Drunk. Where, hey, where's oh Jared, my. by the way? Tell the audience where Jared is. Some thirsty Jared, shirt. Jared right now is at Drill, and he's actually doing, I think it's a fucking a week-long drill, seven days or something like that. But I got several text messages from him. He's walking in the snow with a heavy-ass ruck, and he said, after three days... Now I'm in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucked up part is he probably is. I believe it. He probably has a two pack showing up out of fucking all that fat that was just hiding it. <laughs> if he comes home, if he comes home and has dropped that eighty pounds he picked up, I will be shocked. I'll believe I, it. Dude. I want a picture I'm, of it. You haven't seen it. That guy is amazingly fucking. He's got insane recovery. I, you know, the funny thing is, as much as we make fun of him for being fat, like he's actually not that fat. Like he could drop that weight and like. Eight minutes. Hey, that's that's the weird thing about him. Jared, like, he's really if you ever shape. look at an old picture of Jared, he's like a really skinny, fit dude. Like he's never like, I don't think Jared could ever be like a super athletic dude. But like, if Jared wanted to in three months, you'd be like, God damn, it's a good looking dude. You know? Yeah, he's got. Yeah. he yeah. would trim his unibrow. He'd exactly. lose a little bit of weight, and then he'd be <laughs> he could shower. He could shower. Yeah, he could shower once shower once every a few week. Times he's good to go. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's good to go. But we 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 miss him. We miss of him. Course. And, uh, no, J- big time. I mean, I'm looking at a pic. P- uh, <laughs> I can't even say it. A you picture it. of Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. It's, it's like a, oh, what, what, the a tongue twister right nah, there. His a, fingers a, are like sausages. They're so small. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jared, if you're listening, we we miss and love you, buddy. Uh, we miss you more than you even know, bro. Uh, Rocco misses yeah. you inside him. We really do. We no, miss he that French press. He's never press. inside me. He's never inside me. I've been he didn't split no, that but pelvis? He, he, no, I've been, yeah, I've been yeah, inside you're, him. You're going to be the one that mounts him. You're going to yeah. be the one that mounts him. We keep talking about it. It never acts. It's like it's like sexing, and you get all the anticipation, but he never wants to go through with it. Dude, Ross, you said Super Bowl episode. Where are you trying to go with this? Seriously. Oh, boy. Here's the thing. You know I'm, you know I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. So the, the hype around the Carolina football team right now is, uh, is strong. The, the Cam Newton the old hype. Cam it, Newton? Is strong. Those pants he showed up in walking out of the plane the other night. The, the leather ones, you know the ones I'm talking about, Rocco. Yeah. I fucking They've know. been all over the news. Uh, Versace, Versace, Versace. Um, they look like Nicki Minaj's backup dancer's pants. No um, shit, man. And, and even with all of that hype, they are, they've only lost one game this year to my beloved Atlanta Falcons. I, I am still, still... Going for the Denver Broncos this weekend. You're I'm going a, for the Denver Broncos. You are a good man. You know, I uh, I, I I grew up. My my mom went to college in Denver. Uh, I was a St. Louis, okay, L.A. Rams fan way back in the day. And then when they went over to St. Louis, I changed teams. This is when I was like fucking nine because I grew up watching football to become a Denver Broncos fan. I ended up living in Denver for quite some time. Uh, huge, huge fan. <clears throat> that's that's my team. So. I, thank you, Ross. Because I mean, Cam, yeah. Newton, Cam Newton's got the hype, but we got the Denver defense, the good offense. I, it's going to be a good game. I hope. I mean, and I hope. Broncos I know. I, I hope so too. I, re- I really hope so too. And uh, uh, there's rumors that this may this might be Peyton's last ride. All right, is a is last ride. Can I so, speak so, on that though, real quick? You can because okay. If it is, if the Denver Broncos win the fucking Super Bowl, yeah, Peyton Manning. Retire. Fucking Please. retire. Walk away on don't, top. Don't fucking Brett Favre it. Don't do not do anything. Yep. Who were we talking about the other day? There's You have to go up on top, and it's like... You, you have, you have few, to try to go out on top. Even his brother, by the way, Eli. Eli Manning said, there, there's nothing more than I would love to see than my brother win the Super Bowl and then go and out on top. And fucking be done, because you're a legend. Yes. Didn't, didn't, John, you're a legend. didn't John Elway do that? John, he John Elway away. is like the one person that yes. did that, and he's, he's the manager so I'm saying, of, very of the Denver Broncos. Very few dudes have got... Dude, my, uh, Michael Jordan had the chance, and then yeah. he comes back. And I'm going to play baseball. Oh, man. Gonna, oh, my yeah. God, dude. Like, walk that, away. By, by the way, Rocco, that, that, was, it, that was heartbreaking. It, he went off on a dream Nike commercial with no that game winner shit. against game Utah, shots. game six. Everything about that, even after the shot, his reactions were perfect. Like, motherfucker, walk away. Walk away. All of it. Right into the sunset and say, thank you, motherfucker. Thanks for coming later. And then he does all the other weird shit. And he's like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, and he, hey, Rocco, like, if we were shooting a movie about Michael Jordan and that was the ending, it would still take three takes. He did it in one, and he should have just left the court yep, on a, exactly. like a fucking champion. Exactly. Instead, he came back two years later about JT's weight class. And just 
<laughs> yeah, dude. Just, and that, and and the sad thing is, is that's all I think of. Like, well, dude, and he, he was he was one of the great. Like, he tried I, the minors as a fucking in the in the White Sox minor leagues. Embarrassing, it, it, dude. And it's like he wasn't good. He fucking it, he fucking went back and he was a number forty five. Like, bro, you ruined your legacy of number twenty three. That was a that was a jersey that my brother had on his back as a kid because of what he's done. And then, Morocco, go, if if you remember correctly, he went back to twenty three and then won three more titles and that was a, that was that was a nice thing he did oh you thank know? god yeah you're right yeah but it was that it was that washington wizard stint that got him where it was like uh, oh hey i own the team because he, re- he retired that's right and then owned, owned, the, owned the team and then came back and said guess what i'm now not the owner i'm going to play and show you guys how to win and it was like it was like your dad getting out in the driveway with you after all those years you're just like, oh no, the, the, dad. I, I think psychologically, for anybody that's very successful, it's hard to walk away when you when you're on top. And I think the perspective behind it, it's like, if if you win the Super Bowl, right? You won, yeah. you won the fucking Super Bowl. Like, take it for Peyton Manning. You win the fucking Super Bowl. Like, open that beer. I, I, I just won the Super Bowl. I can do this again. Yeah. That's that's what or kind of rational it's thinking the same would be. As but us, it's not dude. like I, I think I've said this in other podcasts. It's the same as us. We go overseas, have a blast, come back, and we're in civilians, and we're like, man, I miss going overseas. And then some guys go contracting, some guys re-enlist, some guys, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think it's the same. They're they experts in top. their crafts, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And you want to, even though you go out and on top, you want to go back and do it again. Of course, because yeah. no matter how old you get, you always feel like or the mentality of being 25 again. Like, I'm I a, s- Bullets can't touch me. I yeah. can still shoot that fucking th- free throw from the fucking... I still feel like yeah. I can go in and fight in the ring and realistically, competitively, no, there's no fucking... Way. I'm, old, I'm old in the world of fighting, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so, so let, me ask you, let me ask you guys this. If, if in your mind right now, could you go back overseas and you think you could still fuck shit up like you could when you were 20? Oh, dude, I think what happened. Have, have you age? looked at me lately? Yeah. Yes, of course I could. <laughs> I, 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 I think th- that's what I'm saying. Like, looking at both of you in real life, I look at you guys and I'm like, oh, shit. These are still two fucking badasses who, who could go and fuck <laughs> shit up if, if they had to. Yeah. But only you guys are going to know that in your yeah. own mind. I, I think, same as Peyton Manning. Yeah, re- realistically, like I would have to definitely pick up my cardio because I know how it is carrying, carrying all your, your plate carriers and all your ammo and all that stuff. But... I mean, at my age right now, my rank, dude, I wouldn't actually be doing the fucking door kicking. I'd be kind of facilitating movement for the group and or, or making sure the boys are good. So it's a little different. At our age, we'd be probably a higher rank and where more we're facilitating movement for the group and, and, and not actually kicking doors. Yeah, dude. I mean, if you really truly look at it, it's like the older you get, the more understanding of life that you have of whether you – whatever. But – uh yeah, I, I could definitely go back, dude, Ross, but uh, no, nah, man, like, the older you get, the you more... You wouldn't be the same, is what you're saying, Matt. No, nah, man, the more educated you get, I can make more of a difference being in um, this shit I'm doing now, rather than, you know, kicking down a door, you know? I mean, not gonna sure. lie, if, yeah. if CAG was like, hey, we got an opening in B Squadron, you wanna fucking be an assaulter? I'd be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd all but, take a shot at that. It's like, it's like, I'm it's like Rookie of the Year, like, yeah, I'd definitely take a shot at the fucking title, and let's, let's go kicking some doors. What about you, hey, Ross, if someone was like, hey, we'll throw you in a stack, we'll give you six months of weapons training, you can jump in the stack of a fucking, a real a soft fucking... unit, what, would you do it? I, you know, he, here's the honest answer of that. A, at my age, say, you know, same with you guys. Like, I think as younger, yeah, I, I could have absolutely done it. I, I think there's now there's so there's limitations. You know, when you get in your 30s, you're like, fuck, man. Y- you want to do things, and y- you just your body won't do the same shit it used to. And I think it's knowing that mentally, where you have to make the decision yourself of like, all right, cool. Am I going to be a fucking idiot? And, and just dive into something and, and probably get crushed? Or am I going to make the smart decision and say, you know what? God damn it. I, as much as I hate to say it, my, my best days are probably behind me as far as, you know, physical shit goes. I, I, now, dude, men, I would say... Men, go ahead, Roth. Go ahead. Finish. No, I'm, I'm going to say this, man. Behind me. I think... That time of my life is behind but me. But no one ever wants to say that, Rocco. And no, that, but, that's the issue. But what I'm saying that, is like, that, that probably Peyton's going through feel, right now. I feel like more like I have fought that war, and I'm more worried about the fucking the shit we have to deal with here in the United States, man. And and I want to be here for the family. I want to be here for the kids. If I wanted to, man, I've seen some fucking special op dudes that are 34 that are 
monsters, dude. We we know guys, Venikoff and guys like that are like physical specimens, but they they maintained that and they they decided to keep their life that in that manner. Dude, right. I'm not there anymore, I'll, dude. I'll, I'll break it down this way. I think it's it's called like the book of life, right? So, do you want one chapter that's the same thing the whole entire fucking you know? Your whole entire the book? The whole book is yeah. one chapter? Yeah, or do you yeah, want to really... Exactly. It, it, it's sometimes uh, yes. when, you, when you read a really interesting chapter, it's so fucking hard to turn the page. It's so fucking hard. And it's the same thing with transitioning from a job or a lifestyle with anything. It's really hard to turn that page. But once you do, you kind of enjoy the next chapter. Like, I, I'm so fortunate of doing what I did, but, man, I, I deployed for 10 years. I'm fucking... I'm good, you know, like... Sure, do I want to go back? Yeah, sometimes I do. I think I could be fucking better than a lot of Fuck. people with some shit, hey, but I'm out, not going Jim. to. Ross. Keep going. We'll do a countdown. Uh, can you hear me a beer? Oh, you know what? I got Matt has one right here. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. It cut out. You, where, do we, where do we leave out at, dude? If the, uh, the book thing. I'll go on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there any more there? Yeah, I'm getting drunk, dude. Me too, dude. Same here. All right, ready? You ready? Oh, Ross, now you're showing up to get drunk. Good. Oh, <laughs> wow. Really? I was drinking all day. I love you. Okay. <laughs> One, two, two three. three. Action. No, but I'm talking like the book of life. Like, you can always try to live your life through one chapter, but ultimately, like, you want to look back and have, like, a comprehensive, diversified life, right? So, you know... There's shit in chapter one of my life that I would love to go do. I'd love to fucking be this alpha male dude that has all these cool experiences. But ultimately, my happiness has been so much better doing different things in life. Like, I've lived that life of deploying. You know, I did spend 10 years of my life doing that shit. So now I'm like, where can I go from here? Let's be, a, let's try business. You know, I'm going to fucking mess it up a lot. But uh, it's a new experience. And that's what really makes life enjoyable for me, you know? Uh, and, and a lot of people, and I think that's why a lot of people have a hard time of letting go of things that they did earlier in their career is that they can't find something else later in life that makes them just as excited. Absolutely. Uh, and, and giving themselves new new challenges all the but time. But I think it's a different excitement. Like, you know, it is. It's such a fucking cliche comment, but you're like, once you've hunted a human, there's no better excitement oh in the world. It's God. a truth, man. Like fact. Like, you know, and, and not to tell war stories, but like when you're riding on the door of a sixty with your night visions, landing on the X of an objective, literally chasing down dudes with guns and shooting them in the fucking face. There's there's nothing that in your whole entire life, I don't give a fuck, will ever fulfill that. That is the epitome of like like masculine shit you know like that you're okay God damn it i knew it i knew it matt i fuck i had this conversation with my wife i was like dude murdering like killing someone's the last that, that's the last frontier that's it that's well, as high as you can go right <laughs> well dude base it off like emotional components like women have you know t estrogen we have testosterone testosterone is yeah. based off being an alpha male you always any guy you meet that's like i'm a fucking man it's it's proving yourself women give life and, men take life yeah it's yeah and i think yeah. The, biggest, the biggest thing to like associate that with would be like mma fighting right you beat the fuck out of another oh dude in the ring God. and you win right so that's a pretty yep. gnarly thing but when you kill someone and know that their whole entire existence has ended that's it and and you saw that not like i shot a building and we killed some people you guy guy a tried to shoot you and you fucking killed him cuz you were better Nothing is more fulfilling in your life. And, and it's fucked up if anybody wants to say, well, what if this... Have you ever read the book Angels and Demons? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, <laughs> man. So He gets a blowjob, and right when he comes, he cuts her throat. He slits her throat. Really? He, yeah, he calls it the ultimate finish. That's fucking gnarly. It's wow. gnarly as shit. I wouldn't do it, but I think about it. <laughs> are, we talking, are, we, are we talking about Angels and Demons, the Dan Brown book? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's exactly what it is. He talks about there's a, the, the guy, who the crazy killer in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he talks about the, the ultimate finish, and he's getting a blowjob from a chick. As he comes, he fucking slits her throat, and that's the ultimate finish in that's his opinion. That's the darkest thing I've that's ever heard. fucking right. Hey, I didn't think of it. It was fucking, fucking that Brown book, whatever his name was. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I... I Dude, and, and at night she cries while he rides his seat. He, he, the guy goes over and fucks the dude's wife for not looking after his kid. And then he comes and makes the guy look into his eyes because he wants to own his soul. That's some dark <laughs> shit, too. Oh, that's so fucked well, up. Well, wife. welcome to Drinking Bros. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drinking Bros. Podcast. Welcome 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 Bros. Podcast. Drinking Bros. Did we already I, talk about our sponsors? I actually like the way this is turned tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It went dark. It, it went, went real dark. I like the way this is turned tonight. And, and by the way, do you know one of, one of my favorites... 
things about you guys as friends in real life is you guys have other shit in your lives that you both love and you both care about. Yeah. Like, uh, like Rocco, for, for instance, for you, I've never seen somebody so passionate about their kids, raising their kids, being the best dad they can possibly be. And, and your posts about, you know, being at your son's wrestling matches, even though he finishes second, which I wouldn't post that, but you do. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's, dude. It, uh, no, honestly, like it's inspiring because everybody sees you as a huge, you know, a, a big guy. Like, oh my god, he's he's you know tatted up. He's probably you know harder than life, and it's and you're and you're not. You're like a big teddy bear who loves his children more than life itself, and you have something else to live for, and it's it's fucking awesome to see. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, man. It took me a long time to actually acknowledge that myself. Uh, in my past marriage, man. I, I think I expected my wife to take care of the kids and, and Big Poppy to fucking take care of the bills. And that's kind of what I expected, and I think that's what I thought what life was. And then I went through my divorce and everything, and, and I became a single father and realized, damn, man, my kids are more important than anything in this life. And so I I, I guess I see it differently now, and I think, I think a lot of people see it the same way. I just I personally didn't see it that way until I finally was kind of cornered to, to raise them on my own. And when I did that, man, then I then I realized how important just simple shit is showing up to their fucking volleyball game or wrestling match or, or baseball game what was. And so I definitely try and take pictures while I'm there, and, and I try and document it because I want that shit to last, last forever, man, because Big Poppy's not going to be around a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A no, while, and, yeah. And, and by the way, yeah, you, you'll be here for, like, at least 15 more years. <laughs> uh, nine. Maybe, we'll maybe we'll see. Yeah, I'll call it four. No, no, no. <laughs> I, but by the way, I feel the same way because I, I have a child now, and, uh, you know, earlier on in my career, I was like, fuck. If I don't, if I don't do three movies a year, like you're, you're worthless. You're fucking worthless. And then as you get older, you're like, man, you know, you have a child, you get married, and you're like, because I, I love my my child the same way that you do, and it's like, you know, I'd really like to cut that back to one movie a year. You know, spend more time with him, watch him grow, enjoy his all of his life because uh, I'm not gonna get it back. You know, I can't get that time back. Yeah, man, that's that's something I, man. It's funny you're saying. I was thinking about that today. It was like doing a, the drive here. I hit traffic and I was just in my head thinking about dumb shit. And that's exactly it. It's like there's a lot of time in their lives that I've missed. They didn't acknowledge it. They don't really give a shit because all they think is like dad's working. But I know yeah. I missed it. I know I miss birthdays. I know I miss fucking important days like ballet recitals and shit like that. And so it eats me up because it's like those are things that the memory in the picture. I'm not there, man. And I'd rather be in that picture during their ballet recitals, their graduations and shit like that or whatever it is. And so, yeah, I do my best. I do my best to be at every important event in their lives. Um, can not, can I be your fifth kid? Yeah, go. Yeah, you know you can be. <laughs> I really need. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I really but, need a good figure. But we, we all life. can't be there, man. I mean, there's things like bills and everything that has to be paid. So I understand that as well. And so that's why I preach a lot about balance and trying to find it. And, and shit, I'm still dealing with it myself. So it is what it is, man. But goddamn, those kids definitely are motivation to try and be the best man I possibly can be, man. Yeah, no, no, and it's uh, it, it's a, it's a cool thing to uh, to see, but but again, I, I don't think a lot of people have, you know, those kind of things to look forward to in life, and uh, that's why we got started on the whole Peyton Manning topic of can you go out on top, can can you let go of something that you've loved for so long, and find something else that you're happy about? Because you know most athletes leave the game, and it's they don't know what to do with themselves. You know, most people leave the military for for, for that example, and and they don't know what to do with themselves. Um, well, that's so, why we're talking that transitional piece so much because it's like it, I think it's applicable across the board. Like whether you're a professional athlete, whether you're, wh whatever the course is, it's like that whole book thing we're talking about. And, and not to beat this to to death, but like you know, there's a point in time where you're like, I I I'm gonna go out and top in this fucking job that I'm doing, and then now how can I use those experiences to benefit in another you know portion of my life? So it's like. I mean, you look at uh, who were we just talking about? The manager of the Denver Broncos. Um, oh, oh, yeah, John Elway. John Elway. Yeah. Like went yeah. out a legend, oh, and now he, he manages the Broncos and is taking them on a winning streak. Like that—that's what life is about, right there. Is it. ending a career on a great note, and it doesn't always work that way. Obviously, the next but objective, then, man. Yeah, we talk and, about and that all the time. Yeah, man. yeah, and and then, and then there's others. Like my, my wife has this theory that no athlete, musician, or artist. Can ever leave at the top of of their profession. They never do. Why uh, is that? I know. They never no, I'll tell you, dude. She was a, so so. We'll, we'll yeah. get into this because she was a diehard Derek Jeter fan uh, of oh the Yankees. Oh my god! Ew. He he got he got older. Hey, he's uh, the man though. Hands down. He is the man. The man. And, but in the year before he retired, 
he was making a, a you know a simple routine grounder, and it it appeared as if his leg broke off his body for no reason, <laughs> um, just because of sheer age or whatever. And uh, he came back to play the next year. She's like, oh, God, don't do it, Derek. Don't come back and play. Yeah, but he didn't end on a good note, bro. He ended on an okay note. You know, he, he, had, a, he had an average season for, look, he was fucking 40 at that point. Yep. Um, but if you remember the last game at Yankee Stadium, uh, he hit a game-winning RBI yep. to win the game, and they, they, they surrounded him at first base. That motherfucker went out a hero. I'm going to tell you um, this, man. So he went out pretty good. That is the that is the one baseball player in this whole world that has had probably the most blessed career ever. That guy has, ever 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 his career. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't. You can't even say it was him because he was just surrounded by such amazing ball players. But his his first his rookie season to his next season. I mean, guy was title after title after title after title. But also as well as just being surrounded by some of the most amazing ball players in his time to continue to have the success throughout the years. What an, like if anyone if if any child in our age uh, Ross would ask yeah. to be any ball player that's the life you want to live Derek one hundred percent Derek Jeter I mean look he he played for for twenty years at the Yankees the best franchise there is won you know four or five World Series rings dated every single girl on the fucking planet. Gave them signed I like baseballs that. I mean, when yeah, they left. I'm not a baseball fan, but yeah, yeah. No, but he, and, and then Fuck he gave him. him Matt. I don't know if you know this story, but he gave him autographed baseballs on his one night stands when they left the apartment. No shit, dude. He, True story. So he's one. Of the, uh, he's one of the guys that's such a class act that every fucking all the chicks he had sex with, all the all the girls he ever hooked up with, they never had anything bad to say about the guy. He's just like, no, he's, he's a good. Dude. Nobody's got any dirt on the guy. No, no one has any dirt on the guy whatsoever. He's just a good dude, bro. I know. He's just so a good this dude. What, this he's is what giving drink, out baseballs. Drinking bros with Ross and Rocco turns into <laughs> fucking sports <laughs> announcing ESPN on this No, no. Look, look. Because I, I think this goes, Matt, I think this applies to musicians as well, where it's like, would we look at our musical heroes the same if no, they no. wouldn't have... Well, wait, if wait, they wouldn't have wait died to get out, me in the like, conversation, of course. I mean, you look at H- Hendrix, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, the best artists go out on top. Nirvana. Uh, yeah, and, and but but here's the thing: they they died, so they didn't get a chance to be shitty, right? Um, and they went out. If on top, they would have, but they, if they would have stayed around, I think, around. I think, no, but I think that's them coming out on top. I know that's, that's the fucked up thing because we all wanted at least one or two more albums, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, my favorite artist of all time. Love Stevie Ray Vaughan. He got Vaughan. clean off of coke and drugs. Had about two years of solid touring. Was starting to work on a new album, and then died in a helicopter crash. Out of fuck. Not Dallas. Yeah. It, 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 he died in a helicopter crash. But it's like you wanted more, but you didn't get more. But now he's a legend. Why? It, because he never had that. Like, oh fuck. Yeah, you know? I know. I, I know. I, I've, I've, yeah. never, I've never been a big music fan to the point where I know all the details. Like you guys really know this shit, and I really don't. But uh, like the hip hop world is probably more my thing. But well, it's like I, Tupac then, right? You know? and right. Biggie. Exactly. Tupac. They, they, they went Tupac out legends and while they died. Legends. Em- Eminem yeah. is still crushing it every day, but he's 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 mm-hmm. not pop culture Dude. anymore. So there, people, if he died though, if, if he, he died, died right, right now, no, it would right. then then people would lose That's their exactly shit. That's the point. If you don't draw, if you don't die in dramatic fashion. In, yeah. the, in the music industry, you're not a legend, yeah. which is so weird. When when the recently who was the Stone Temple Pilots lead singer, Ross? Oh, oh, oh yeah, Scott Weiland. Scott, Scott Weiland. Weiland. He died. He died. But it was on, after the fact. Exactly. It was in his decline. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? That still was like, dude, he died fucking doing this thing, man. But that, yeah, I feel it's like yeah, a dark he, conversation because it's like promoting death, but like you want them to live long, happy, full lives and, and go out with their fucking families, but. In pop culture, doesn't see it that way, you know. It's, it's kind of a fuck. No, up no, they don't. And, and you know what? You know what, Matt? I, I worked with a. Uh, I did a movie with a, a famous musician. I'm not going to say who it is, but uh, he had a. He he dropped his theory on this this whole. You know, is it better to burn out or fade away thing? And he said, "Look, if if I wish Lil Wayne would die right now." Oh. And he's like, "Not that I." It, but he said, not that I want him to die because I dislike him or, you know, I think he's a bad person or whatever. But he goes, if he died right now with, with the wealth of material he has, um, he would go out as, as, as probably one of the, the greatest rappers of all time. Probably because he's got, you know, 6,000 songs in his uh-huh. vault. Yeah. And they would just keep coming out for the next 20 years. Oh, like, and you'd be like, like oh, shit. Like Tupac, where we thought he was alive, yeah. the Machiavellian exactly. shit. Exactly. Yep, exactly. No and it was like, wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say, dude, 
Here's the only problem I have with Lil Wayne. I don't the, like him. In them fucking tight ass goddamn pants that he, everyone else is doing now. Dude, we, so, Ross, we were talking about this gym. It's like that fad, that tight, skinny jean fucking fad is going to a point where I can't take it anymore. But it's not even like I know. If, if I, wear, I, can't I, wear, get, I can't get behind it either. I wear fitted jeans sometimes and I'll go, fuck it. They, they can look decent on it. Fitted. You, but when you, like the guys in the gym, and I think we talked about oh this podcast God. before, it's like a thing here. It's like, skin tight spandex like that you look at girls so it's like you see somebody bent over in the water fountain it's a fucking dude with like spandex yeah. like stop yeah, yeah stop God. i fucking hate it with sagging and all the way down to their ass it's, it's just, just the whole stop. thing is fucking we know where sagging started from right it was in jail to let other dudes know i'm jail down, yeah. get fucked that's what yeah. sagging started I, from dude i'm gonna tell you this i don't know if that necessarily is a true or but they started the in, that to fucking it's in, as rumor it's part of the jail scene though uh, it is part of the jail scene but i would tell you it's like Growing up, that was very common just to make your pants look baggy. Like, I dude, I wear 38s now, and I wore 38s in high school. And I don't know if that was just, like, it just looked more, it was like, I don't know, it was, that was just style. If you didn't wear baggy pants that big, you were made fun of. So I don't know where that all came from. Because we're, I, I, I think Matt is right. I think it's the jailhouse mentality of that, and then socks with sandals, where it's just like, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, wait, you, you might be fuck? right. Socks with sandals. Are you are you going to commissary? That's an LA what, thing, what are we dude. Doing? That's and that's so fucking weird. I dude, it's weird. But now I guarantee in jail they're not wearing skinny jeans. God damn it! <laughs> no, no, they're, they're definitely not. And they're they, look that commissary food isn't as good as that Super Bowl food. No, you, oh. I, I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Would, what, what, what are you having for Super Bowl food over there, Rocco? I'll get, I hope everything. It's, I hope it's fucking tacos for one. God damn it! <laughs> does I, your wife? Let me ask you: Does your wife make the Super Bowl meal over there? Or do you go to a party? No. So we have uh, we have a really cool neighborhood, man, where we all hang out together. Like Matt's Matt's witness this that uh, that all the neighbors just kind of come together and just cook together. So at the neighbor's house right next door to mine, we're gonna be hanging out there. Uh, I think. I think Julie's going to be cooking the beans, <laughs> oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, yeah, of course. He, he's just like me. When, on big social events, the same thing, dude. We like to grab a beer, go out and sit by the barbecue, and we, we usually cook. That's, yeah, that's our thing, man. Yeah, just chilling, dude. So yeah. I'll be, I'll the be girls have to clean, but we, yeah. we cook. My neighbor, yeah, 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 yeah. My neighbor so I'm Chris. The same. I'm the same. Yeah, my neighbor Chris likes to grill. He's really good. So you never go to another man's house and step on his grill. You let no, him do his no, thing. No. So I'm going to let him. Do- burning the meat, you're just like, fuck yeah, it. Like, this yeah. is your house, bro. I let him do his thing. Yeah, I, I and then beer. you got to eat Chris's burnt shit. And then you butt fuck. And then you, <laughs> you, know? you butt fuck. <laughs> butt fuck it's his Chris. house. No, no, Wait, he's like my second father. We don't butt fuck him. No, no, but I'm not saying butt fuck him, but it's like, oh, man, I'm eating this fucking turd burger that's real burnt, but it's like, yo, it's Chris. Chris's house is Chris's it's grill. Like, it's I told, like I told a the motherfucker not to put her on her with like fucking <laughs> kale Cajun sauce. You're just like, oh, God, no, I, really? Hey, everybody cooked good in that neighborhood, which is another blessing, dude. It's great shit, man. Those fucking tacos, That's awesome. you make those, uh, the blended meats that you get from the meat yeah, store. I, that shit's on point, dude. Yeah, I make a, here in El Paso, and like some, some of the border, border towns, they make a taco called Descada. It's it's just a mixture of meat. It's very similar to like a. So for the white people out there, discada disc- is literally the leftover <laughs> blended meats. It's a yeah, fucking it's, Mexican it's your, it's your, but, but it's delicious. good as fuck Dude, though. Rocco, yeah, I had it at your good. house and it was delightful. Like people ate the shit out of it's that. It's fucking really good food, man. So if you make it right, you know what you're doing. It tastes amazing and it fucking can fill a whole goddamn fucking family of thirty, and you're yep. good. It Hell really yeah. can. And, and by and by the way, there was a, there was a, a night where you had us all over for a fight at your house. You had you had all the meats out, and then you you got some extra like twenty extra pizzas from Domino's just in case you know more people were coming over or they were hungry. Nobody touched the fucking Domino's. They destroyed whatever that that Mexican word you just said was in Spanish. Yeah. That that Escada. meat was amazing. Escada. Yeah, and you cook it in a disco. <laughs> oh yeah, man, that's, that's some cultured shit right there, man. It, it really is. It really is. Yeah, I, uh, I we usually go to you know uh, somebody in the neighborhood's house as well, and then bring a dish. Uh, my lady likes to cook the spin dip. The spin, spin dip. dip is, what is that? Is that yeah. Spinach dip. What spinach dip? Spinach dip. Ooh, I yeah, love she it. goes Lots spinach and ar- artichoke and nice, uh, and a little dude. sour cream I in it. I love that shit, dude. Same, same. I can eat it by the truckloads. I could bathe in it. I could bathe in it. Um, you know, uh, dude, it makes hey, my skin check better. This out. All oh. of it. I went to a party the other day, and this lady made some cheese dip. She used uh, sausage, and she chopped it up really fine. So it was like just sausage meat itself. She cooked it on a like a frying pan. I'm going to go through this because I'm telling you, you guys need to try this. This is like the drunk cooking <laughs> yeah, show. No, night. no, no. But this, but this is great. But this is great. And then she got the Velveeta cheese and melted it. So it's Velveeta cheese chopped up with small pieces of fucking jalapeno and red peppers. 
And then the fuck, dude, it was so fucking good, Ross. I swear to you, I almost want to put that in a tortilla and just eat it straight. And it's just, all it is is cheese and meat. It was you're like, making me hungry, you fuck. Oh, yeah, I, look, it, you're, it sounds like queso fundido is what yeah, it sounds yeah, it's very like. Similar, no, no, very similar to that. Good call, dude. God damn. Yeah, I know. Look, I know my Mexican shit out in L.A. all these years. Yeah, that's you know? exactly where you got it from. Yeah, I like how we're, we're literally having the drunk talk show. We're just like. Hey, let's talk about shit we like. So, you know, it's a funny thing, Ross. This is kind of what a lot of people don't see. Like, this is just us hanging out. Really. Yeah, this it, is re- exactly. it really is. If you want to really Ross, is. Rocco, and Matt let's sound like this is what's going on. We don't have it, it, we don't have what it sounds like. boy JT to talk about splitting a pelvis on a fucking <laughs> an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah, it's great though. We miss them, but you know, I'll be I'll be curious to hear the feedback on this one. I'm 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 sure they'll be like, holy shit, they're they're, they're real fucking people. You guys are so um, normal. What the normal. fuck? You guys, we haven't talked about gay sex once since Jared. Oh, hasn't dude, been I think here. you're right. Not in this yeah. episode. I think we've we've, I mean, we've gone real. Episode. This is the furthest we've ever gone in a Drinking Bros podcast where we haven't talked about gay that sex. That is very, very fucking true. Yeah, because last Shit. podcast we talked about. Should we talk about blown dudes or something? I it is. I mean, no, I mean, no, we shouldn't. I mean, hey, hey, Matt, listen, Matthew. Ross, sometimes you got to suck a dick to make sure you're not gay. Like every time I do it once a month and Here's I'm like, I fucking hate it. I have, I have a thought. I have a thought. I've always like... Have you ever felt like you weren't eating pussy right? Like no, I, I eat really good pussy. <laughs> no, no, wait, 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 wait. No, what, no, what is? Here's the, what was that? It's the same idea. What, no, what the fuck I'm gonna tell you, that? it's the same idea as if do women know if they're sucking dick right? Because because a guy would know what a guy wants more. Because let's be real. Yeah. The Listen, guy would know what a guy wants more, so the girl would probably know want, what a girl if you wants. Want to be honest? Uh, and, that's what I'm being and, honest. And I won't put this out yeah. there for my own relationship. I want to hear this, but like. I would say nine out of ten girls uh, across the board, ninety percent of girls don't know how to give blowjobs. You, you know what's so funny? They all think they know how to. Dude, it's the worst. <laughs> dude, it, it, I'll suck your dick so good. I'm sure it's every fuck, girl at home though is like, dude, those guys don't know how to fucking eat pussy. Right, like, I'd I imagine, but it. G- girls are totally different. But guys, Bro. it's like when, when girls when they when they when they're sucking your dick, they give you that look, right? They're, they're like, yeah. And they look up like it's good. You're like, ow, your fucking teeth are hitting oh me. Oh my god! They're not even using their hand yeah. to do no, but yeah. but like like yeah. fucking a blowfish on your dick. You're like, <laughs> listen, grab my shaft with your fucking hand. Stroke the dick. Stroke the. Suck grab the dick. my balls and then suck the head. It's, 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 it's so, so funny, basic. Dude. Watch porn Man, for hey, once. You know, in your whenever life. you say, whenever you say, somebody says that, you know, I think of that Sylvester Stallone story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. grab the guys. balls. Don't grab the balls. Yeah, yeah. and for for those of you listening at home, there's a legendary story on every single movie set. That you go on, including Range 15. This was, was this was discussed. Of Sylvester Stallone left his mic on after a scene, went into a trailer with an extra, got a blowjob, and all everybody could hear around Video Village was stroke the shaft, cradle the balls, cradle the balls, stroke the shaft. Uh, so much so that they put it in Tropic Thunder. So if you <laughs> yeah. go back and watch Tropic uh, Thunder, Jack uh, Black, Black says it. So stroke the shaft, the cradle of the balls. A little good insider. Cradle the balls. Little good cradle the balls. That's cradle a, that's, the shaft. Cradle the balls. It's a great inside story, man. I love that. But but, uh, no, but Rocco, this is exactly. one of my to my defense, one of my favorites. To my defense on that is because I've learned like I'm I I don't just like. Eat pussy and then not expect myself to get the girl off. Like, right. like what do you like? So over do, the years, this is funny. you I'm, learn. Whereas girls are like, I'm you, you guys like blowjobs. You're like, eh. and that's the thing. The guys like every guy likes a blowjob. No, I've had some horrible blowjobs. Where you, I'm like, ah, ah, oh, we should just watch the you know, movie. It's funny. Even a bad blowjob is a good blowjob, but it's still a bad blowjob. No, I've had some really bad ones. Wow. Like like teething. Like it's oh. like it's like it's like a baby. Like she's baby trying to, it's like a baby shark. She's coming wa- in with so the, she's watched yeah. porn but hasn't learned. So she's trying <laughs> yeah. to unscrew the top like, with her like, fucking it's, teeth. It's more teeth than lips. So it's yeah. kind of like a like like a, like, like you're a, a confused look what, in your what, face. Yeah, what mouth. part of that did you think was feel good? No. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not trying to like rip the skin off yeah. my dick. Are you I trying to unscrew the top? Because that's my head on my face and that doesn't come off. It doesn't come off. Ugh, but Matt, Matt, I will say this: you have some, you have some like weird habits and weird things that you like that you're a firm believer on. Um, like when you almost killed us in Sundance the other night. What did you do? Uh, Wait, tell six me. inches of snow because you wanted to take a picture of uh, Christmas lights. Uh, you want to explain, <laughs> you explain, you explain that to the audience? Did we what? slide across the fucking floor? Is that when it was? Or are you talking about something different? No, yes. We, no, we we almost died so Matt can take a picture of some Christmas lights. Um, Ross, you want to you want to tell the audience? Ross why? is fabricating that a little bit. I mean, yeah, I hit a curb or so. <laughs> oh, we slid off <laughs> the fucking road. <laughs> we, we wait, 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 wait. This is this is. A, let me go and tell the story. Because I'm it. the in betweens. Okay, get it. So, <laughs> so we tried. We had a 
front wheel drive fucking rental vehicle. A minivan. A minivan. A minivan. It was a minivan. Tires. Yeah. And all Adam, four of us, by the Adam way. All, all four Drinking Bros podcast members that's right, it were was. in it from yeah, Vegas it to Sundance. It was. And so somehow we got to the point where the snow was fucking coming down hard. Uh, we decided to go home back to fucking rest for the next day. And as we're driving, we start sliding a little bit. Well, you missed that one because I was like, man, if this was, if you guys were in the car being bitches, I'd go way faster. And like, right as I said that, I just slid the whole entire van into a curb. And into I was like, curb. well, I guess I'm going slow. <laughs> Ba- you, you, I bashed it, bashed it into a uh, an Im- like I, I would say a snow embankment. It's a snow a embankment. Snow that That's exactly night. what it was. But yeah, and there was there was about six or eight inches that fell, and then you pull out your your cell phone and take a picture of a lit Christmas tree. <laughs> on, <laughs> whatever, listen. On January twenty third. No, no, no. But I asked you. I said. I said. I said, Matt. What are you taking the picture of? Well, and that's and, the thing. So I got in a big argument with Melissa. Because she took the Christmas lights down. She's like, take the, well, well, some of them. And she's like, take the Christmas tree down before you leave for, for SHOT Show, which was like two weeks ago. Do you still have the Christmas tree up? No, I don't. But listen. Wait, you listen, still have listen, the Christmas tree? Listen, listen. <laughs> you, leave the, you leave the fucking Christmas tree up. You leave the Christmas lights up until the Super Bowl. I've never you take heard that. You the fucking I've never heard that either. That's not a, I'm with that's you. I'm with you. I've that's never not heard a Mexican that. thing, I'll tell you that. No, because what, it no. buys you time. It gives you a month and a half and then you take the Christmas <laughs> fucking lights out. <laughs> Bro, if you did that in my house, it would burn on fire and the house would go down, dude. All right, all I know, so the reason I got that, when I, when I, I did executive protection for the president of Warner Brothers back in the day uh, and okay. that's what he did. They would come, all the workers, and they had, I got, I mean, I mean a mansion. They would come on the day after after Super Bowl Sunday, and they take the lights down, That's and I hilarious. liked it. I liked it. It's it's a day where I, you know because I've you get never heard it is because and you, it is. I I like it too. That's man. actually that, good. It's, some it's, rich shit, have but a I like day, it. You I know like they it. need to take them down because it's like, baby, you're not taking the Christmas lights down. I like the fucking Christmas lights. Yeah, you know. The day after the Super Bowl, Fuck you it. take the fucking lights. From now on, that's what's going to happen in the Vargas household. You have to. Yeah. Have to. I, I, uh, and, and by the way, Matthew, I, I, when, when you talked about that, I side with it. because, uh, But it is some rich, rich shit where you're just like, oh, I'm going to have people over for the Super Bowl. I want the house to still look very festive. So you leave yeah, that exactly. shit up. Exactly. I like and I like it. It's a tasteful thing. It's, it's definitely a tasteful great. It's thing. A, it's a great idea. Hey, Ross, though, you have to admit, though, I did find us an alternative route. And we slid. Because <laughs> I, I, we slid down the hill. I found us a better route to go up because I couldn't make up the hill with the tires. Found us a better route and slid you down You have no the idea. So we I actually, we, we know she yeah. slid about a half a mile down the hill <laughs> just to get to the house. Uh, about a half a mile down the hill. We had no brakes. We only had the front two tires that, that were locked up. And we had Drake's uh, We Made It on full blast <laughs> in the car. Yeah, that's good. We made it uh, with, with, with Soldier Boy on a remix. Nin- so Ninja, we had, it was Ninja We Made It. Ninja. Yeah, yeah. Nin- Ninja We Made It and uh, <laughs> on, on full blast in the car. And I, I want to be honest, as we were heading towards our death, all I could think was, dude, if we died right now, like at least I'd be laughing about it, <laughs> you know. Like, and how do you explain that to a, a cop of like, dude? We made it by Drake is on as these guys were killed. I know they, like, they no, they didn't make the it. They definitely didn't make it. Bodies everywhere. It's like Ninja, we made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's no, like no, no those didn't. guys You're, definitely didn't make you it. You died they before did. you even went to Sundance in a minivan. Yeah. Ew. God damn. It was a white minivan. That's all they had available for en- from Enterprise. Uh, <laughs> We, I will say this. Way, we, made be- we made the best of that car trip. Dollars, Ross. Nine hundred dollars. Really? You're oh kidding? God. Yeah, because because I didn't turn it in the next two days. We got an, snowed in for two. In, yeah, and overcharge nine hundred dollars. So have fun with that. I had to pay nine hundred dollars. That fucking we got snowed car. in for two. Oh That's no! Man, Ninja, I'll, we made I'll it. You, <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, yeah, we made it. I'll give you some money, Matt. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. It's I didn't a cool know that I story. Need to be funny on the podcast, so we can make some more money. Yeah. But I will say this: we, we uh, from getting a minivan uh, in Vegas with the four of you guys, like the four of us in there. That, that was one of the funnest car trips I've ever had. Agreed. Yeah, that was good. Uh, it, it was cool because we had like a the whole music thing. We all kept picking songs of our time and fucking things. That it was cool. It was a good time. 
do that. Jared, well. w- Jared was the only one, since he's not here, we can bag on him. Uh, he's the only one who listens to, to only Collective Soul from the 90s. He's so weird. He's so <laughs> weird. He did not share in any of our recent music from past, you know, 1999. But dude, uh, Ross, it's actually funny to bring that up, dude. I almost texted you from the gym today. The uh, the Yellow Wolf and Kendrick Lamar. That's a great uh, fucking Yeah, gym, One Train. One, one train, train, dude. Who's that by? Uh, uh Kendrick on. Lamar, ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky. Uh, ASAP Rocky, yeah. yeah. Dude, what a good song. I listened to that and repeat for like fucking 15 minutes a day. That, I love that. It's a good Dude, cardio song, man. Hey, Ross, I just actually watched an Notorious B.I.G. movie, and I was thinking, what was that song that somebody made recently, and it was Notorious B.I.G. doing a freestyle behind the track. Oh, dude, that was a mix with Kanye, actually, the guy that Matt hates. Um, yeah, no. What a fucking Again, good Kanye, jam. if you want to fight for $50,000 going to charity, <laughs> let's, let's have you, a mo- You'd have to up it to $50 million, I think. I don't have I think, that kind uh, of money. I can barely make $50,000. No, you so still 50, beat 000. him, though. You beat him, though. No, I would not. I know. Out yeah, quick. so then you should go for the $50 People don't million. know I like to fight. I can fight a little $50 bit, million. We should go. I know you can fight. Uh, so l- MMA match, Kanye. Let's do it for charity, bitch. Let's go. Ooh. Yeah, but uh, but uh, hey, b- by the way, uh, Rocco, there, there's a bunch of sweet mixes out there on SoundCloud. Actually, um, uh, not you know, I'm not, I'm not promoting SoundCloud or anything. We we don't have shit to do with them. But uh, uh, there's a there's a Biggie one and a David Bowie mix that's really really great called Biggie Stardust. Um, and then there's a Biggie one and a Kanye one uh, behind uh, the fuck is that song called? For the toast for the douchebags, toast for the assholes. Yeah, yeah, uh, you showed us that yeah, in the yeah. car. That was actually a good one. Dude, but send me, it was a dude, great, it was a great just one. Send me a, great send, one. if you can screenshot those for me so that I can download them. Honestly, those were amazing. But watching, it's funny, dude. Watching the fucking Notorious B.I.G. movie, it was pr- it's pretty interesting because it's it's spoken as a Notorious B.I.G.'s perspective. Yeah, and, 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 and but hey, did you like it? Because I love that movie, by the I th- way. I think it was great. Was going on, dude. The girl who played uh, Little Kim looked stu- like right on, as, identical. As, like so did the hoe. wife, the Faith Evans. So did Faith the Faith Evans, Evans exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I was telling Joe, hey. I was like, dude, my God, these girls are fucking exactly what exactly what it would be. And the funny thing is, the guy who played Notorious B.I.G. was breathing just like Notorious B.I.G. does. Uh, dude, he was breathing heavy the whole thing, the and whole... I was like, dude, what was their sound mix like? I know, because it was just all breath. It was dead uh, on, dude. But it was dead that was on. Like Hollywood heard on our channel. <laughs> 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 Hey, 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 Vince! I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this a step further. Uh, they're we shooting the Tupac would. biopic right now. Oh, dude, I'm interested to see. Wait, the, damn! But get, guess who's playing Biggie in it? Who? Same guy. Same oh, fucking same guy, guy from Notorious. Who's playing Tupac? Dude, they got a guy that looks identical to him. Dude, you oh, sent me that good, 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 yo, good, good. Yo, Ross, you sent me that photo. I legit thought that was Tupac. Crazy. So did I. So, so, yeah, so, so did I. If you guys, uh, if you if you Google the Tupac biopic and just Google pictures from the set. Those that those two motherfuckers look identical to them, and I and I'm amped to see the Tupac. And I'm, I'm they could have right gone with somebody famous, yeah. and tried to paint them. Well, to that's look what like they did him. with fucking Notorious B.I.G. Because the guy who played Tupac was fucking way off, bro. The guy who played Puffy yeah. was way off yeah. too. And yeah. I was just like, that's what killed it for me. Because I'm like, man, these guys are nowhere near. But Kim and Faith killed it, dude. They were exactly yeah, they fu- crushed. almost dead on what I thought. Yeah, they crushed it. Yeah, dude. It was fucking... That's that's why... I just didn't like the fact that it's funny because Notorious B.I.G., I'm interested to see if he actually wrote that somewhere, the shit he was saying about Pac. I'm interested to see if he actually wrote that somewhere, what he was saying, like his perspective on Tupac, and if that's real, what, what actually went down. Because, I, dude, I, who the fuck killed Tupac? Who the fuck killed fucking Biggie? Still yeah. in question. You know, I, I think that notorious pick because uh, it was it was Puff Daddy was involved, uh, Biggie's mom was involved, and I think Tupac's mom was involved too to a certain extent. Nice. Um, they involved her in that, and I think and I think vice versa. They're involving the family of Biggie and the one of Tupac um, to to tell this one. I don't. I, I kind of believe the notorious one where it was like you know. Um, he got killed by that that guy, and it, that that's that's at least that's the guy in the well, police hey, reports. Did you ever see yeah. the, the the notorious Big? We're, we're getting crazy in this podcast, but uh, the interview of him after Pac died, he literally goes, he goes, I, I feel death. It's coming for me. He's like, I'm gonna get killed. It's the most. It's it was like an MTV interview. It's the yeah. mo- It's the craziest thing you ever seen because he knows he's gonna die. Like he, yeah, he, you can see his brain searching for an out because he's like. Maybe I can live, but he was like, "No, I, I know they're coming for me. I know I'm going to die." And then he died well, about d- two weeks later. Dude, last the f- and here's the thing: he but why? But Matt, why go to L.A.? Is my question. Unless you want to die, because yeah. why? Why risk it? Why not wait a couple St- years for shit to die down and then go? Stubbornness. 
because we're all yeah. idiots, dude. We're alpha yeah. males. I mean, I would have been in LA. So I I don't, I'm I saying, I'm like, I'm not gonna fucking shy away from that bitch. I'm gonna show up and fucking do my thing, dude. Yeah, hey, but that leads back to the Peyton Manning thing. Is it better to burn out or fade away? No, I don't exactly. Know. Maybe it's exactly what it leads to. It's the same dude. thing like me getting pissed off. I'm not on the ISIS hit list. I'm like, all my friends are. I'm not on the. I'm like, I'm not on the ISIS hit list. I'm like, I'm me. Come on, what the fuck? I'm good. Matt, look, if you work, if you work hard enough in this life, you will be on the ISIS <laughs> hit list. All <laughs> right, but I'll probably work for it and I'll get shot in the head at some fucking bar from asshole with like a goddamn you know a Ruger 22 yeah, that I, make, doesn't, I know hey, doesn't hey but me, by the way do you ever think of that the rest of my life? what do you hey do you ever think of that of like dude I've done all this crazy shit in my life I don't want to die like a pussy in some weird way where no. it's like you got shot in the grocery store picking up a can of Gerber no but that's how I will go out man I'll, I will go out by in a car accident I'll go out in a fucking some asshole like but that yeah, that's how I go. I mean, I I can't top what I've done in my that's life. A, that's so. a big thing for me yeah. too. Is like, dude, I'd hate to go out in a car accident. Jay. I feel like yeah, that would be. I I don't want to drown either. Car yeah, accident. Oh, I don't want to drown. I don't want to drown. Drowning is oh, such a big fear of mine. That's so easy, dude. You suffocate. I don't want to. No, burn it's today. not. It lasts. It lasts like you know, a, a minute or so. I've like, heard it's the most because you can still hold your breath. Oh, that's it's God. one of the most peaceful ways to go. I don't want to. Uh, go. You're, Trust you're, me. That's that's no no way no fucking. You're being a bitch. I'd rather I, go not, car- carbon dioxide poisoning and just yeah. not know what happens. I, look, I, w- I would go out on pills, I think. I, I think I'd go out on pills and just enjoy my shit and then just go to sleep. <laughs> I think Rock, if you wanted to be honest, I think Rock is going to die uh, texting The Rock, like trying to get a hold of him on Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. And hey. then he's just going to fall over. And then, But when the police come, The Rock is actually going to respond to him and be like, yeah. hey, bro. Hey, dude, I, love, I love your shit. It's I love me. your channel. Let's hang. You're such an inspiration. And he's dead. Oh, he's like, man. Rock, the Rock's FaceTime. Yeah, the Rock burr, knows burr, who I am. He knows burr, who I am. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> and, and he's just, Rock has passed out. He knows who the fuck I am. <laughs> you think? Uh, no, he doesn't know who the fuck I am. Yeah, no. I know. I, yeah, and look, if we're thinking of shitty year. ways, if we're thinking of shitty ways to die, if I had to watch like Mall Cops two and I died during that, that would be uh, my ultimate like my worst fucking nightmare. Right? Would be, pa- like watching Paul Blart in a fucking Segway. That's how you uh, go. Oh uh, Jesus God. Christ, man! The, like 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 the least comedic thing of all time. Of like, hey, congratulations, Ross. You were a funny motherfucker, but guess what? You died to Mall Cops too. Yeah. Paul, uh, Paul Blart was Paul taking Blart, the shit Blart. in the fucking American mall. That's how you went out. Oh, uh, God. Uh, l- l- hey, let's pick it up on that note. Let's go to the drinking bro of the week. Boom. Yeah, Woo! Boom. Boom. I, I got a special one. I, I, uh, it's to a guy named uh, Jeffrey Rhodes. Hey. Um, he is, uh, gosh, he is currently fighting cancer. Um, wow. and, uh, he, his buddy actually wrote in and, and told us this story. Um, he was reading at night. She cries during chemo. Uh, he, he thought it would lift his spirits if, if, if we mentioned him, which, which we are. Um, and, uh, but his buddy also said that he, he, he lost the ball. And I want to say that you weren't so much of a friend on that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but I got to uh, admit, Lance, Lance Armstrong lost the ball, and he's a stud. Yeah, here, here's the thing. So, you like, can lose listen, the ball. There's, there's and a still, whole future ahead of you, buddy. You yeah. can still ball out. You can still ball out. So yeah. to his friend who was who – is, who, who, his friend, his name is, is Mitch Starnes. Mitch, you were trying to maybe Mitch. shame him a little bit, but uh, Mitch. I'm kidding you, Mitch. Uh, you're, you're a beautiful man. Don't need Thank a you ball. for writing in. Don't need and, a ball. Uh, yeah, and, and let him roll with that ball. Like, he'll still kill it. He'll still kill it. Well, we love so, you, dude. T- Thanks for fucking being a stud and beat the fuck out of that cancer. Beat that I mean, that's, we that's do. Two, and so so fuck to, that shit. To, to Jeffrey Rhodes, dude, fuck cancer. You, fuck you will cancer. beat it. Uh, thank you for listening to the podcast, uh, drinking drinking our whiskey, reading our books. Uh, we love you so much, and uh, we're all pulling for you over here. Fuck yeah, brother. Fuck yeah, brother. And uh, on that note, yeah. from, from Matt Bass, Rocco, and Ross Patterson, this is a good night. This was a nice podcast. It was it's simple. Nice. It was, it was simple and, and mellow. I like it. It was. I liked it. I think people <laughs> will enjoy this shit. We'll find out later. I don't know. They'll probably hate it. <laughs> fuck you, fuck. Oh, fuck you guys. Love you, fuck drinking, bro. Love you. 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 Love you.